Welcome back, Devils fans. We are in the dog days of summer, as they say here. Early August, a little bit of a slow time of the year, so there hasn't been a lot to put videos out about, and, um, you know, just enjoying the summer. But the other day, or a couple days ago, the Tom Fitzgerald appearance on Spittin' Chicklets was released, and it was a great interview with Fitzy. He went over a lot of things about his time with the Devils, where they, he sees them in the future, um, his playing career, and a lot of other background information. Really good interview. I'll put the link in the description of this video. But I'm just going to talk about my key takeaways and things that I, I thought were worth talking about from the Devils' perspective. So how Fitz even got on the podcast, apparently Wit and I think R.A., maybe some other guys there, we're at a Devils game late in the season, and Witt said to Fitzy, if you make it to the second round, you got to come on the pod. We dispatched the Rangers in seven games, and Fitzy fulfilled his deal and appeared on the podcast. I guess it was probably filmed in mid-July, maybe. But um, so let's get into it. So obviously, two of our biggest losses in the offseason came in Damon Severson and Graves' departing the team and Fitz had mentioned that Luke Hughes, Kevin Ball, and maybe some others will have a chance to step up and fill that void left by those guys. Now he also said he expects Luke to take a good chunk of Severson's ice time and probably get power play one or power play two minutes. I think everyone's excited about Luke. He showed you know what he could do in the few games we saw him play including the playoffs, the future is bright for Luke, and he's obviously going to be a big part of the team for next season and hopefully the next you know, 10 to 15 years. We'll have the, the Hughes brothers, hopefully, long time locked up in New Jersey. So other key takeaways I have here, they were talking about uh, Simone Nemitz, and Fitzy said he doesn't need Nemitz to, to make the team. So I think that's a, a guy that a lot of people are looking at who's going to come to camp, battle for a spot, Fitzy said he doesn't need to make the team and that he will be given an opportunity to force his way onto the roster. So th that's a guy that's been on everyone's radar. We're going to see in camp, can he, you know, force his way to be a New Jersey Devil now? Or will we see him back in the AHL with Utica? Time will tell, but we are going to have some really good battles in training camp this season. And he's going to be a guy looking to, you know, make a name for himself and hopefully stay up with the team. Um, Pitsy also mentioned the Colin Miller trade shored up uh, a spot right-handed defenseman that we're missing now with Severson being gone. So I think that's kind of an insurance policy if Nemitz doesn't make the team and gives Fitzy kind of a um, you know insurance policy just just in case they want to see Nemitz back in the AHL for a little bit to develop some some more. They talked a lot about Timo. So apparently Fitzy was trying to get Timo for a while before we even got him. I think the season before, he had reached out and said, you know, if Timo is going to be moved, please let me know when the time comes. Fast forward to last season, the Sharks were shopping Timo, and ultimately we got a deal um, done with San Jose and brought him in. I thought it was interesting that he said he was targeting a sign-in trade with them so that when we gave up the assets, Timo would be locked up coming here on a, a long-term deal. And he said that ownership gave him the green light to just make the trade for him without the extension in place. Uh, kind of ballsy move by the Devils, but I, I think that they probably had a good idea that we could keep Timo here and sign him in the offseason. Again, a little bit of a risk. There is a chance he could have, you know, it would not have worked out, but ultimately it did. And he had mentioned with the whole process of signing Timo long term that he wants players that want to be here. He wanted to acclimate him in New Jersey and see if it was a good fit. Timo got sold on the area, the team, the culture that we're building here, and ultimately decided this is where he wanted to be before signing that long-term deal. And another thing that I thought was super interesting was a quote that Fitzy said, uh, and it wasn't specifically in regards to Timo, but he said, uh, you know, as a whole, the guys on the team, this is the quote, they can't take every crumb on the table. I think that is a, a really telling quote in kind of the mindset of the Devils where a lot of the guys are on slightly below market contracts that, you know, guys can't want max dollar. You know, if you want max dollar, then go to a different team. You're, ideally, if you want to be here, you see what we're building. We're going to be a contender for years to come. 
that you give a team friendly deal where, you know, in Timo's case, he got 8.8, .8 and, you know, another team may have given him 9.2, 9.5, something like that. He took a little bit less on an annual basis to be on this team. He likes the area. He sees what we're doing. We're going to be a threat. If you want to win, you come to the New Jersey Devils and hopefully give us a little break on the price. So I thought that was very telling. Can't take every crumb on the table. I like that from Fitzy. He said that allows for depth and to build a competitive roster, which I 100% agree with. Um, glad to see that deal got done with Timo. I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, oh, the other thing I thought was funny was Fitzy, when they were talking about the playoffs, he kind of took a little dig at the league, which I think was totally justified in that we play the Rangers in Game 7 on a Friday night, and then Game 1 is in Carolina on Sunday. And that is kind of bullshit. I, I don't know how many times it's happened in league history. It's probably not a lot where a team plays a playoff game and then, you know, 48 hours or less than 48 hours later is on the road to start the next series. It was kind of Bush League, I thought, by the league. Uh, and I'm glad that Fitzy kind of took a jab with that because, you know, obviously it may not have made a difference. Carolina was the way better team and, and all the credit to the Canes. They handled us in the playoffs and... Uh, you know, not to make an excuse or anything, but it, it may have made a, a, an impact on game one or potentially the series if we had that extra day or two to recover, rest guys up in between the series. I'm glad that he kind of, you know, mentioned that, uh, that that was kind of weak by the NHL. Uh, the other thing I thought was kind of telling and very interesting was that he had mentioned with the quick turnaround from the Ranger series to the Canes, he said that he second-guessed himself and said maybe we should have started VTech in Game 1 in Carolina. I, I couldn't disagree with that logic more. I personally thought that after Schmid came in in the Ranger series, I don't think VTech should have started another playoff game, in my opinion. You know, we were down 0-2 in the series against the Rangers. Schmid comes in, steals two at the Garden. At that point... No matter what had happened going forward, Schmid was my guy. And if it was up to me, I would have rode him no matter what happened for the rest of the playoffs. Um, but I do think it's interesting that Fitzy said maybe looking back, we should have started VTech game one. Um, I'm glad we didn't. I mean, yeah, we lost the game anyway. But I think that Schmid should have just had the net for the rest of the playoffs because he, he's the one that got us there to the second round. Um, what else I'm looking around here? Yeah, and, and back to goaltending for a minute. After we went down 0-2 to the Canes and we started VTech in Game 3, you know, that was a crazy 8-4 win at home, I didn't think VTech played great. And after that game, I knew that we were most likely, just because we won, despite, you know, maybe not great performance by VTech, um, that we would probably see him again in Game 4. I was really, really hoping we went back to Schmid for Game 4. But, obviously, we did not. VTech started Game 4, kind of put up a stinker, and that essentially was the end of the series. After we lost that game, we were down 3-1, to one, and it, it, just, it was just too much to overcome. But, um, you know, overall, a great season for the Devils. We took a lot of strides going forward as a group. These guys got a, a taste of the playoffs, a playoff win against our rivals. Great season overall, but I did think that Game 4, Schmid should have gotten the start over VTech, despite VTech winning Game 3. Some other interesting things in my notes here. Uh, Fitzy played college hockey at Providence, and Lou Lamarillo, former Devils general manager, Devils legend, Lou Lamarillo was his athletic director at Providence when he got there. I thought that was a pretty cool kind of Devils tie um, that I, I did not know about prior to hearing the interview. And he also mentioned that Jim Hughes, which is Jack and Luke Hughes' father, he was his teammate for two years at Providence as well. So there's a lot of different devil's webs uh, here with Fitzy going on throughout the years. I thought that was another interesting thing that I, I, wasn't, um, I wasn't privy to prior to that interview. They also spoke about Jack and his emergence as a leader kind of uh, with the media and in the team itself, everything this year. He said that, you know, Jack has really stepped up in his role as a leader of the team, dealing with the media, dealing with hard questions, saying the blunt truths 
that some other guys may try to sugarcoat or a little be a little more politically correct about that Jack has no problem addressing those things, kind of shoots from the hip, says what's on his mind. We've seen bits and pieces of that in his different media interviews throughout the season where, you know, he is a guy who will face the music. He will deal with the, the hard questions from the media and kind of tell them exactly what's on his mind. Um, so props to Jack on that big season for Jack last year. We're going to hopefully be seeing 100 plus points out of him next year. And then the my last notes here um, in regards to Fitzy talking about the Devils, they had Pasha, as most people who follow Chicklets, Pasha is a friend of the show. He's a big Devils fan. So they let Pasha come on, and he asked Fitzy a couple questions on the show. The, the first guy he asked about was Seamus Casey, who I've done a previous video on um, during the development camp. I love Seamus Casey. I think he's going to be an absolute monster for us at some point in the future. And Pasha asked about him is, you know, he was saying something along the lines of, is he kind of the overlooked guy amongst the defensive prospects because there's so much hype around Luke Hughes and Nemitz is that uh, Seamus Casey is kind of the guy that maybe not everyone has on the radar as much as those other two. And Fitzy had mentioned that he loved um, Seamus Casey's camp. He said he looked great, gave him a lot of praise and said that he's definitely going to be a guy to watch going forward. So again, I'm a big Seamus Casey guy. I think he's going to be an absolute monster. And then uh, on the other prospect end of it, Pasha asked about Holtz. And he said, you know, Holtz is a guy that kind of might be behind most people's expectations in, term of, in terms of development at this point in his career and kind of was digging a little bit about that. And Fitzy basically said, Holtz is going to have his chance, needs to bring uh, bring more pace needs to keep his legs moving. And Fitzy also said, you know, I take some of the blame and maybe the hiccup in his development in that Fitzy said he thought he may, should have sent him down earlier in the season. He mentioned our 13-game heater, as Jack called it, where Fitzy acknowledged that, you know, coaches aren't going to really tinker with the lineup too much when you're winning 13 games in a row. And I guess he took a step back and looked at it and said, you know, maybe that would have been a chance to send Holtz down, give him more time in the AHL, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Um, it's kind of easy to go back and uh, second-guess things when you know the outcome and, and yada yada. But he definitely said Holtz will have plenty of opportunity. And he said he needs to come into camp and ready to take someone's job. So I do think this training camp, for me, is one of my most anticipated in years because of the fact that there are going to be a lot of people battling for jobs and it should be super competitive. There's going to be... You know, the blue line's slightly crowded right now. There's going to be some good fights to crack the opening day roster for defensemen as well as, you know, the bottom six forwards. There's a lot of guys that are kind of on that cusp of making the team or going to the AHL, and I think we're going to see a lot of a lot of battling. And I look forward to that in camp. Um, scanning over here if there's anything else. Yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. But great interview by Fitzy. Gave some good insight into a couple different things regarding the Devils. Definitely worth the watch. Put the, I'll put the link in the description of the video. And as always, let's go Devils. Until next time, friends.